Uh, the Speaker of the State, uh, Borneo State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Abdul Karim Lawan, has called on the federal government and the military to rescue two local government areas of the state from the control of Boko Haram insurgents. Now, the local government areas are Guazamala, Guazamala and uh, Kukawa local government areas in the northern senatorial zone of the state. The lawmaker, who is the representative of Guazamala, said he has consistently pleaded with the federal government to deploy security there so that the civil population can return there. Mayor, let me come to you on this regard. Now, we know that Boko Haram, since its formation in 2002, making it 20 years this year, this sect is yet to, we're yet to see them fully decimated. What do you think is responsible for this terror sect to exist up to this point? It has to do with the nature of what they do. It's not a Nigeria situation. If you look at, um, if you look at um, terrorist organizations abroad, in Afghanistan, um, um, in Pakistan, they say that that's why the huge um, firepower resources. Resource and resources available to the Western powers you understand? The Taliban are still there. In fact, they are even in, they are even in government now. You understand? <laughs> even ISIS, there are still remnants of ISIS everywhere. They are building up again. That's why the fact that they were defeated. It's because of the nature, because it's not a conventional war. Right. Because it's not a conventional war. It's you, the, the, theater, the theater of war is not, is, 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 um, is, is not determined. So it is difficult for you to, because these are people that sometimes they may look like ordinary civilians. And what they do is that when you attack them in a particular place, they move to another place, hibernate for some time, and then regroup and come back and attack again. So that we have not been able to defeat them in 20 years is not unusual. Hmm. The, even the United States of America have not been able to defeat those people. You can defeat them and not allow them, you can degrade them. Considerably, not allowed them but, to regroup. Yes, but they will still be there because, like I said, because of the nature of the business, it's not a conventional war. So that is the reason for that. But lately, the 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 our security forces have have, have achieved considerable success against, um, especially in the northeast, mm. against um, the terrorists, uh, both um, Iswap and Bukhara. But I think I may be wrong, but I think that the problem with the two with the two local government has to do with the terrain of that area and the distance of that area to how it is so far off that it will be difficult for the military mm. to go there because it's, it's not only enough to, to defeat people. You have to, you have to conquer them and take possession of that place. You have to put foot on, troops on ground mm. to be able to dominate that area and hold. And because of the because of the terrain of that area and the distance, I think it will be difficult for um, the security forces to be able to retain. Because I know that this will be about the third guy that the honourable is complaining about that place. But I think maybe the security forces believe that it will not be in their interest to go and to put food on the ground. Yes, on the ground there. Because for you to be able to allow people to come back there. There must be troops on ground. Mm. And that is the fringes of Borono State. It's very, it's, it's desert-like mm. region. Right. Mm. BQ, if you are to look at this issue from your own end, would you say that perhaps security presence is really lacking in that area, so we need to really beef up um, security on that, in, on that axis? What are your thoughts? We're talking about uh, Guzamala local government, which is the local government of the speaker. We've not put troops there at all for more than four years. That, that whole local government, there is no presence of troops. Despite the um, appeals made by the speaker and the governor, when the governor set up a committee, a rebuilding committee for that um, Guzamala local government, the committee could not take off because of um, insecurity. In 2015, Boko Haram killed a total of 206 soldiers in Guzamala local government in one day. 
that is the single most deadly attack carried out by those terrorists on Nigerian troops. In fact, if you go to Gudumbali, which is the headquarters of uh, uh, Guzamala local government, there is an epitaph or a cenotaph in, the, in honor of those soldiers that were slaughtered in one day by, by, by Boko Haram. About 100 and something died and some succumbed to their injuries later. You know, so it's a very dangerous area. Mm. And I know that the Nigerian army is taking its time. You don't forget they're also stretched. The governor wants to make sure that all communities are reclaimed and so that he can decongest the IDP camps and return people back who to are their willing homeland. to go home mm -hmm. back to their ancestral lands. But uh, you have to be careful. In um, Abadam local government, where Colonel Abu Ali was killed uh, back then in 2016, the governor has been eager because since 2014, civilians have not lived there. So he has been eager to send people from the, from the camps to those places. And he's been wondering why should we have a community, a big fishing community, where you can grow rice and other things, and nobody is living there. We just have soldiers alone there in Malamfatori, you know, which is the town where Colonel Ali, Abu Ali was killed. Now, they put, they sent people to the place. Boko Haram went there about three weeks ago to go and kill soldiers again. So you have to, you have to um, understand that for Nigerian troops, they have to take their time. You look at Kukawa, for example, is one of the biggest local governments in Nigeria. Mm. You have to ask yourself, how many troops do you need? Some areas are easier to police than others. It's such an extensive place. Right. So the, the speaker was talking about Kukawa, and then his own local government. In Kukawa, we have, we have even put troops in some places. But Guzamala, we've not put troops at all. Mm. So where people can see that, okay, we are, we, the, our local government is very dangerous, yet there is no presence of soldiers. Who will go there? You have uh, uh, places like... Um, uh, the garrison town of Monguno, at the edge of our country, we have troops in the in the capital of the local government. People are free to you know to, to stay there, mm -hmm. but once you step out, it becomes dangerous. People can hardly move unless they are accompanied by um, uh, lorries of soldiers. Guiding them Security. is still the same problem that we have in the Goza area. Goza, Laminkara, going all the way to Madagali in Adamawa State. You have to lead people with troops for them to be able to move from really? community mm. to community. And Baghdad, which is the local government, uh, which is the hometown of uh, um, Senator um, Alun Dume, nobody has lived there since 2014. The senator, in fact, there was a day that he called me to say, yes, I've not been able to go to my hometown because the place has to be uh, well even secured. certified safe right. for even the army to allow people to go and settle there. Mm. You know, because if they allow people to settle there and they slaughter them, we will blame the, we still blame the army. So this is the situation. No one should think that the war has ended. There are still no go areas in the northeast. So how do, you think, how do you think this matter can be addressed? If you are to, when we're seeing the, the issue on ground, how do we, can we solve this challenge so that people can really go back to their homeland? Let me tell you, there are I know places that the army has captured up to three times. Right. You capture because you, you don't have enough troops to, to man every community. Mm -hmm. They come back. You leave the place, there's a challenge where you move to that place where there is a fresh challenge. You leave that place, they come there. They come and take the place. So it, the number of troops have to go up significantly. I don't think there has been any time when we put up to fifty to 60,000 troops in the Northeast. And the Northeast is so big. Some of the very big local governments in our country are in Bono State, Dambua local government, very big, you know? 
So, and the enemy knows that there are limitations. You can't be everywhere. You can't police every community. Why did the army come up with the idea of super camps? Because they found that they could not put their troops everywhere. If you put troops here, you put another one in the next village, they won't have the required strength to confront the enemy when the enemy comes Strike. in numbers. So they then decided, okay, we leave some of these communities, then fortify our super camp, stay in the super camps. Even at that, those boys were still going to meet them in the super camp. Well, some of us have been asking that we have to improve in terms of our troop strength right. so that we can maintain the greater presence in not just that area, but in other areas where we have issues, especially in the northwest. But if we don't have, if we don't improve the troop strength, there was then the same issue. even places that we, we capture will be forced to leave those places when we hear of a greater uh, oppressing uh, the demand elsewhere. Mm. Even Yobe, places like Yunusari, Gaidam, the hometown of the IG, those places too are not safe. The, the INEC has come out now to say that they, we have to relocate the uh, voting uh, polling stations in those areas. Those areas close to the border with Niger, they are not safe. So people shouldn't think that, oh, because we've made uh, so much progress in the last few days with the Tucanos and all that, imagine that this war has ended. It has not ended. There are still places that people can go to, places uh, the Mandara Mountains leading right up, the, right up to the border with Cameroon. There are still dangerous places. Boko Haram is still present. Mm. Mayor, your last so final thing. So Niger this. Nigerians have to accept the reality. The reality is that we are in a war that is very difficult to win. The only way we can do better is to increase the strength of our troops and equip them properly. Because, like I said, you can, you, can, you can attack these people. It's not, it's not a conventional war where you go there, you defeat, and you take possession of that land, and you dominate that environment. But in this case, when you defeat them, they will move to other places. They will wait for you. They know that you don't have the strength to be able to, to dominate that environment. They wait for you to leave. They will come back. And whether we like it or not, the Nigerian, the Nigerian army does not have the strength to stay and man all, all these stations. areas. It's not possible. That's why they won't go to Kawa. That's why they won't go to Utsumala, because they don't have the troops to man those areas. Mm, indeed, and we hope that we have enough troops, perhaps in time to come.